여기는 캐나다의 가장 큰 대도시 토론토에 소재한 브랜트 묘지입니다. 저희 토론토 민주평통에서는 67년 전 한국에 2만 6천의 전투 병력을 보내준 캐나다에 감사드리고 이제는 연로하신 그분들의 육성을 후세의 교육과 학자들의 연구를 위해 연구에 보존하고자 동쪽의 헬리팩스부터 서쪽 끝에 빅토리아 섬까지 직접 취재를 하였습니다. 1950년 6월 25일 북한의 전면적인 기술 공격을 받은 한국의 운명이 그야말로 풍전등화 같은 화급한 시기에 세계 평화를 위해 유엔군으로 참전해준 캐나다군의 전사자 516분의 의패가 모셔진 곳입니다. 캐나다에는 이 묘지 이외에도 동서부에 걸쳐 넓은 땅 곳곳에 한국전 참전의 뜻을 기리는 수많은 기념물들을 조성해 놓았습니다. 그리고 매년 종전 기념일이 오면 머리가 허옇게 새인 캐나다의 참전 용사분들이 모여서 현역 군인 못지않은 열기와 절도 있는 행사를 치르고 있습니다. 일반인들에게는 오래된, 잊혀진 전쟁이지만 그분들에게는 아주 소중하고 자랑스러운 기억이었습니다. 여기서 한 걸음 한 걸음을 떼어 걷는 발걸음이 너무 숨가쁘게 느껴집니다. 한국인이라서 그럴까요? 지나간 역사의 한 페이지와 맞닿게 되는 긴장과 가슴 조림, 이런 페이소스가 스스로를 너무 압박해 하는 것 같습니다. 
an A-frame, things like that, never seen before. It was raining, snowing, uh, all mud, <laughs> and uh, we lived in a tent while we were at Kimpo for a couple of days waiting for transportation to go up to uh, the front. And uh, it was cold and uh, dirty and the food was not good. Uh, but uh, once we got to the, our unit, things changed considerably. Oh yes, and Korea at that time was a very poor country, very poor. Uh, especially in the countryside, uh, the housing was primitive. I guess they lived off the land, you know. And uh, I don't think the cities were thriving too much. Like different sectors w would probably be doing very well, but the average Korean family probably had just basic needs met, you know. Uh, there weren't, I, I don't imagine there were a lot of jobs because there was all this turmoil over there. I, I was absolutely amazed at, at the, how poor the conditions were. The, what we could see of the Koreans, they didn't allow us to get out in with the Koreans. What we could see with the Koreans, they had absolutely nothing. No food, no clothing, no shelter. Um, no medical supplies, um, and, and the, the sanitation was horrible, and I mean horrible. The, the Koreans had uh, like a Korean service corps, the Korean men uh, would bring up our food, because I don't know if you remember Korea as much as I do, it's all hills. You get up on top of one hill, the only place to go is go on top of another hill. And some of the Korean women would do our laundry, what we used to call the washi women. And they would, they would come in to us, pick up our laundry, a day later or two days later, bring it back up. And it's amazing. They knew exactly whose shirt belonged to who, <laughs> with no markings on them. You know, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours, yeah. We took a train from Pusan to Tok Chung which took, I believe, about 18 hours. And on a cold, uh, drafty old train. And we stopped at the little different villages and cities along the way, and you could see the, uh, the poverty and uh, young children, obviously, uh, not very well off and, uh, and as I say, hungry. As they were engaged in battle at the time, the Canadian soldiers mostly lived in tents on the battlefield, so they were very cold in the wintertime, and in the summer they suffered from the heat and insects. When they weren't in combat, they would cook hot food for themselves, and in the winter they would play hockey when the Injun uh, River froze over. A few years ago, that tradition was rekindled in Ottawa, and those vets would look back at a time when they were playing hockey in the late fall of the year and of course they would also reflect on famous events like the Battle of Cap Young and the Battle of Hill 355. <laughs> 이 공세를 취했을 때에 카나다 아 요단 오스트랄리아 아 부대 뉴질랜드 3개국 부대가 아 여기에 응원해 가지고 어 중공군의 에 공세를 막아 큰 전투에 하나입니다. 아 이때 이영 연방군에 속한 
전장사의 큰 영감 무상한 그것을 영원히 기억할 것이고 이분들의 나라에 깊은 감사를 드립니다. 65년에 한국을 대표해서 귀 가나다의 대사로 5년 본부를 했습니다. 그때 처음으로 우리가 국교가 이제 열려 열려서 무역도 증진이 되고 그 당시에는 무역도 보잘 것이 없었는데 지금은 상당한 양의 무역량을 무역량을 거쳐서 어, 어, 양국이 좋은 관계를 어, 맞이하고 있습니다. 그 당시에 에, 이제 튜더 어, 수상이 그때 에, 출연이 됐고 어, 에, 센타니얼 예를 아주 잘 지냈어요. 어, 그래가지고 벌써 어, 이 가나다가 아, 점점 더 어, 융성하게 발전하고 있는 것을 볼때 아주 대단히 기쁘게 생각을 합니다. 아, 또 한국의 에, 인간 사람들의 이 앞으로도 계속해서 어, 가나다의 에, 주민으로서 어, 그 책무를 다 하고. 어, 양국이 더욱더 발전해 나가는 데 기여해 주시기를 간절히 예, 부탁합니다. 여기는 알버타주의 작은 마을 이니스페일입니다. 비가 내리는 에드먼턴을 출발해 3시간 넘게 달려왔습니다. 8월의 여름인데도 불구하고 이곳의 날씨는 상당히 을신연스럽습니다. 이런 황량한 자연 속에서도 66년 전에 한국을 꾸며 놓으신 참정용사가 계십니다. 한국을 기억하고 사랑하시는 분이시죠. 비록 전쟁을 통해 인연을 맺었지만 66년이 지난 지금까지 꾸준히 한국을 사랑하시는 참정용사 Doug w o r l 을 소개해드리겠습니다. Hi, Doug. Yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I am really good. Really nice to be here today. Do you have family in this town? I have a wife and five children. But they're not in. I mean, they're scattered all over the world. But thing is that we have five. So, shall we go inside? Yeah, we can go inside. Yes, certainly. This one here is the the members from Korea, or from the Korean Veterans Association, that received the the Diamond Jubilee Medal for the from the Queen. And then this here is, as you know, this is from the the statue. That is in the Commonwealth Division or the Commonwealth Cemetery in in Busan, and this one here, as you can see, this is the United Nations flag, the Canadian flag, the Korean flag, and then this here, up here, this is the the red ensign. This is what the the Canadian soldiers and military during the the uh, second or the Korean War. That's what we fought under. And it was 19, I believe, 1967, that Canada switched over to the maple leaf. But this is uh, is one of the original copies of the red ensign. This here is uh, the Korean veteran uh, Korean veterans plaque. And here is the uh, the hat badges in this one here of all the military that served in. In Korea, from the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Uh, over the this way here, the children in the schools to realize that the fact that we lost 516 people that were killed, and we had 1,255 Canadians that were uh, were actually wounded. And I I can assure you right now there has to be at least another 4,000 or 5,000 of us that are suffering from severe post-traumatic stress. And this is something I think that the kids should realize that the fact that Canada did uh, go to war uh, in Korea 
to uh, preserve peace, and that's why our flag there. Uh, peace, uh, freedom is not free. You have to work for it. When death and war will end, no more tears, no pain, no more suffering, only power and death. It's a very nice memorial here, put up by the Korean community of Halifax. And we certainly appreciate that. You'll never know how much we appreciate it. It's a long time ago. Many fond memories of your country. And many happy memories. And a lot of sad times too. But we're just so thrilled the way Korea has come along and such a dynamic people. We wish you all the best. Good memories, good memories. I was on Hill 355 uh, as a reinforcement uh, company for the battle that the Royal Canadian Regiment fought on the 23rd of October, 1952. I belonged to D Company of the Patricias, and that company, being in the reserve company of that battalion, was sent to uh, the, uh, our next door neighbors, the Royal Canadian Regiment, to reinforce or partake in a, uh, or participate in a counterattack which was being planned as the Chinese had take, taken over the top of the hill uh, briefly. Uh, they were fought off after uh, a night of uh, quite intensive killing and uh, and capturing by the Chinese, and um, <clears throat> the while it was a gallant fight, it was very one-sided. So they called on reinforcements from the Patricias, and we were allocated that job. And I spent uh, the next ten days on the top of uh, of three five five, which was the dominating hill in the area, under the command of uh, the Royal Canadian Regiment. And because our name started with a P for Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, we became P Company or Peter Company of that battalion. We're practically not every single night, but majority of nights they were would attack us, but not in any big force. Uh, the Battle of Cap Young. Everybody knows about the Battle of Cap Young and how important that was. That was where Canada got the U.S. presidential citation for the Battle of Cap Young because the Chinese had put on an attack, a, we call it the Spring Offensive, where they were t planning on taking back the city of Seoul. And they had beat the, the South Korean army. They beat them. They had pushed the Americans out. They had pushed... They had wiped out a British regiment. The, our, the Gloucester regiment was wiped out. Um, then they hit the Australians. And we, were, we could watch this happening. Nothing we could do. But then they hit us. And when they hit the Canadians, uh, one of our officers called for artillery directly on the Canadians. Nobody was killed. But it broke off. That was the end of the battle. Now. The history books in the United States say that was the most important battle of the whole Korean War. We were coming and, and uh, we were, we were going to get them, and they ran. So anyway, uh, that, uh, that, that part was not a major battle for us, uh, but it was a matter of consolidating. And everything we did was consolidate up the mountains, down the mountains, up the mountains. And, uh, you know, and uh, it's cold up there in the mountains, too. And, and we got, and we, we used to go through the monsoon season. You know, that rain comes down and you, you, you never sleep with a roof over your head. You just, you just sleep uh, on, on the ground, that's all. There's no, no other place. And when you get up high and those mountains go like that, and it's, it's hard to even get a position, so. We moved up into Kapyong Valley and uh, 
in front of us, the, the Six Rock Army broke and they retreated through us. And they come through us all day, uh, a whole division. And then later the Chinese follow up behind them and uh, we had a battle there. Well, we had 10 killed and I uh, forget how many wounded. And the Australians, <coughs> excuse me, had about 15 killed, I think. And uh, they had quite a few wounded too. They were to our right and the valley was, floor was between us and we were on the mountain on this side and they were on the other side. I don't know if you've heard of 355 Big Attack, that they overran our position. That was like Capion. You know Capion, yeah, yeah. you know the history of Capion? There were 700 Canadian military held off 10,000 enemy. Yeah. Oh, I've got the history of it. Yeah. yeah. And we, we had 355 where the enemy pushed us off yeah. at night. And next morning we took it back, but we lost a lot of, okay. so it's a lot of casualties, yeah. killed or yeah. Yeah. were taken prisoner. Korean that, that we had with me fighting, who was fighting also, but he was in the Korean army to uh, to to uh, yeah. I didn't know that his his name was was Kim Kim. I remember Kim, and he was. Uh, he was, well, I forget now, I, I forget, but, you know, he, he was loading my, my gun all the time when I was shooting, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, it's, this, I, I, I don't remember really, it's, you know. Most of our flying was north of the Yellow River, which we were not supposed to do, but I would suggest that of the big the Russian airplanes that we were flying against, I would suggest somewhere between 75 and 90 percent of them were shot down north of the Yellow River. <laughs> I did one authorized trip over, I think it was Mukden in China. I don't know what that was about. We were often sent out in trips. We weren't sure what the hell we were supposed to be doing, but... <laughs> People thought we might not. Few of us there. Because, like uh, the colonel says, we don't leave. We're here to stay. You stay and you fight, or be buried here. That's the word he gave us. He wasn't going to retreat. So we knew what we were in for. But we done pretty good. Everybody held. I think it was ten men killed. How many wounded, I don't know. But it's a good job they don't attack at night, or I mean daytime, because uh, daytime there, that's when the airdrop come in, and that's why we were ready for them in case that night came, night came again, but they didn't come back. The Korean War was a difficult and arduous war. It was a war of ideologies between members of the same nation, which took place when the region was in a terrible state following the recent liberation from the Japanese colonial rule. This open wound continues to pain people all over the world. The multicultural country of Canada still goes to such regions of conflict throughout the world as it did 67 years ago when it went to Korea. Canadians have long answered the call of their nation. It is echoed in our national anthem it's depicted in countless memorials that dot villages, towns, and cities from coast to coast to coast. It surrounds us on the walls of the Senate chamber and is interwoven throughout the narrative of the true North, strong and free. Indeed, it is that last word, free, 
that demands from time to time the sacrifice of our nation's youth, Canadians have never shirked from that sacrifice. When King and country called in defense of her sovereignty and those of her allies in World War I, Canadians came. They fought in horrific battles of attrition, measured not in miles but yards in the fields of Flanders, on the ridge at Vimy, at Passchendaele, and on the River Somme. During World War II, Canadians were there. They were in the skies over Britain, on the beaches on D-Day, in the hills at Monte Cassino, and defending the lifeline to Europe during the Battle of the Atlantic. A few short years later, in a remote part of Asia, far from the consciousness of Canadians, malice and oppression in the form of communism threatened the peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. When the United Nations appealed to the free nations of the world to halt the communist invasion of South Korea, Canadians stood tall and stepped forward once more, over 26,000 people volunteering to fight for a place they had never heard or a people that they never knew. As the daughter of two survivors of the Korean War, my family remembers the Canadians who arrived on the shores of the Korean Peninsula to defend the people from communist forces of the North. I owe my life to our heroes of the Korean War, and Canada's veterans of the Korean War deserve our utmost gratitude and respect. <laughs> 대한민국의 보훈처와 민주평통의 지원을 받아서 캐나다 한국전 참전용사의 인터뷰 사업을 하였습니다. 캐나다는 1950년 6월 25일 대한민국의 공산주의자의 침략을 받았을 때 닷새 만에 파병을 결정하고 육해 공군 2만 7천여 명의 참전용사를 파병을 하였습니다. 그 중에서 516명이 전사를 하셨고 지금도 378명의 전사자가 부산에 있는 유엔 묘지에 안장이 되어서 대한민국을 지켜보고 계십니다. 또한 캐나다는 매년 11월 11일을 현충일로 정해서 11시에 부산에 있는 유엔 묘지를 향해서 지금도 묵념을 하고 있습니다. 또한 온타리오에 있는 브램턴 유령의 벽 국립 묘지에 가면은 516명의 전사자와 그 당시 그분들의 연령이 기록이 되어 있습니다. 19살, 20살에 많은 젊은이들이 이름도 모르는 대한민국을 위해서 희생을 하셨습니다. 저희들은 그분들을 잊지 않을 것입니다. 영원히 기억할 것입니다. 대한민국이 어려웠을 때 참전을 결정해준 캐나다와 희생을 하신 참전용사 여러분께 진심으로 감사드리며 저희들은 그분들을 영원히 기억할 것입니다. 감사합니다. Military history and Canadian history are very much one and the same. Uh, it's a very important part of our uh, gaining a sense of what it means to be an independent nation. Mm -hmm. So at the Battle of Vimy Ridge in 1917, April 1917, uh, in this battle, the Canadians fighting together as one force, not as part of a larger British force, were able to take a, a very difficult and well-defended feature from the Germans. Mm -hmm. And that is often referred to as a moment when Canada became truly independent mm -hmm. as a nation and really gained this sense that we are our own people. Mm -hmm. Canada Canada has always fought for its own life and fought for its own peace. 1차, 2차 대전, 그리고 한국전을 비롯한 유고 내전, 아프간에 이르기까지 수많은 전쟁에서 평화와 정의를 지키고자 애써 노력해 왔습니다. 이제는 한반도에서 전쟁이 멈춘 지 예순 네해가 다 되어 갑니다. 당시 캐나다의 젊은이들이 낯설은 한국당에서 많은 피를 흘렸습니다. 
지금은 머리가 희끗해지셨지만 우리는 언제나 그분들께 감사를 드리고 있습니다. 역사는 때론 위풍에 실려오기도 하지만 늘 같지만은 않았던 것 같습니다. 그러나 정의의 바람은 언제나 한결같았습니다. 바라보는 입장에서는 자기 잣대로 바라볼 수 있지만 우리의 감사하는 마음은 영원히 변치 않을 것입니다. Down and pray.